This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. We should uh, go ahead and get started. I'd uh, like to uh, welcome all of you to the 10th annual uh, Nathan Bass UCSF uh, Liver Transplant Conference. Uh, uh, thank you all for coming, and uh, we'll try to put together a really uh, good program for all of you. And uh, the highlight of the program is that uh, Tony Bass is here today. Uh, I had a, yes. Uh, so I, uh, I was able to catch up with him this morning driving uh, uh, from San Francisco here. And uh, uh, I think that most of you know that Dr. Bass uh, received the uh, Distinguished uh, Clinical Educator Mentor Award. And we had the honor of celebrating that in the ASLD meeting last year. And you look at the, the group, the UCSF faculty, uh, half, more than half, of us, myself included, had benefited from Tony's mentorship one form or another. So it's really a very deserving award. <clears throat> and uh, Tony will come up and say a few things later on. So I uh, just want to announce that, uh, you know, it's very exciting that in the last two years, we have added, uh, you know, five new faculties. And, you know, uh, this year uh, we had two great young hepatologists joining us from the adult side and uh, also one from the pediatric side. Monica Sarkar and Neil Mater, they are not here yet. And Neil is uh, still seeing patients in clinic, so he's uh, trained very well. Um, and uh, Emily Perito is here, Emily, a uh, new pediatric uh, hepatologist. Um, and we also have not really new addition, but you know, many of you know Laurie Carson, who has been a uh, coordinator ex extraordinaire for the HIV. Oh, here's Laurie. Uh, surprise. So the uh, coordinator extraordinaire for HIV and transplant program, and uh, uh, we are really delighted that Laurie took uh, the position as our new liver transplant manager. And uh, th thank you. That's a, a wonderful thing for us. So uh, I want to recognize that uh, we won't be able to put together this program without the hard work of Peggy Millar with Peggy. Uh, Peggy. Peggy is doing a wonderful job as usual. Uh, so our goal is to provide up-to-date information on specific liver disease uh, and issues related to liver transplantation. And this is a great opportunity for us to know you and for you to know us better, and uh, it's important for us to get the feedback from you. Uh, the CME certificate uh, is a little small, but uh, it's all in the handout, so it's important that you get the CME uh, within the deadline. So it's through December 16. Just go to the website, and the password is uh, liver13 right here, and uh, you should get it printed immediately. And if you have any questions, there's an email contact. Uh, for any questions or problems. Uh, we are not able to do this without the generous support of all our sponsors, uh, the Platinum, Novartis, Estellas, Gilead, the gold sponsors, Genentech, BMS, and Silver, Onyx, Genentech, Hepatitis, Vertex, Jensen, Merck, Avilia, and Salix. Thank you all very much for the support. Uh, our program, uh, you have it in the handout, uh, so we try to put together uh, some, you know, really disease-specific talks, uh, try to uh, address some, you know, really up-to-date issues on various different topics. And uh, we have a short break around 2.40 to 3, and then um, the program for today would end around 5 o'clock, and we have a Q&A uh, session before we close. Uh, and uh, we have a reception at Fairway Deck 
for you to relax and have a nice drink and chat with uh, everybody. And uh, our seafood buffet is in the usual play the Silverado uh, ballroom. And we're doing a little bit something different this year. We have a pediatric uh, breakout session. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. But tomorrow morning, we'll have the usual case presentation, which is usually the session that a lot of people enjoy and have great feedback. So we have some very interesting cases. And again, Kimberly Everson, who's not here yet, will be our uh, staff uh, pathologist. And the pediatric hepatology program, breakout session is something new that we try. And uh, it will be in a different place. It will be the Behringer uh, Chaplet Room and uh, our pediatric hepatologist will be running this program tomorrow morning. All right. So I'm going to give uh, center stage to Tony, who's going to say a few words of wisdom and uh, really enjoy having Tony here. And uh, Tony has been our leader for so long, and uh, this conference is. Uh, uh, a great tribute to all the efforts that he has made over the years as mentor and the leader of that program. Tony? Thank you so much, Francis. Well done. This looks like probably the largest gathering at this conference that I've certainly seen in front of me. So let me join Francis in welcoming everyone here and I'm going to also attach to that a shout out to both you, Francis, and Peggy Millar. I know how much work it takes to organize a gathering like this, a conference of this quality. And once again, you've obviously done an amazing job in organizing this, the 10th UCSF liver transplant update. <clears throat> I left my name on there for a second, but I'll get to that. I'm going to also give uh, my thanks in advance to all the speakers and uh, echo Francis's thanks to all the sponsors because you all make this uh, you all make this possible. You make this the exceptional educational event that it has become. And I cannot really say this is the point where I start doing things like this and you know give myself the Barbara Streisand for Klempt moment. <laughs> Because I'm really, you know, words fail me to tell you how honored I am <clears throat> to have my name up there and associated with this conference. It's a big deal. And it clearly remains just this amazing, uh, as I say, learning opportunity. So I'm very, very proud indeed and very, very honored. And I think this is a, uh, an educational opportunity that really enhances uh, life and learning for everyone, all attendees. And it's also a great chance for the community physicians to get together with the UCSF liver transplant team in a relaxed and very lovely setting, really most conducive to learning. Now, as you probably all know, it's been a momentous couple of years in uh, the field of focus of uh, hepatologists. And the UCSF liver transplant team remains at the cutting edge of everything that's going on right now in both general hepatology and transplant hepatology. So you can look forward to hearing the very latest and most authoritatively presented information in this area over the course of this meeting. It'll be spiced up, as Francis pointed out, with some fascinating clinical challenges. Some of you will possibly even recognize them as patients you've referred to this team. Uh, and you'll see that um, coming up tomorrow. Now, from the short distance of retirement, all I can say is I view my colleagues at UCSF uh, with even greater pride than ever. And I note that there are several of the new faculty presenting this year, which is a testament to the quality, the energy, and the expertise of these new recruits to UCSF, and the ongoing tradition of training the next wave of leaders in this subspecialty. So Francis, John in abstentia, Phil, I don't know if Reese is here, but I acknowledge the tremendous support from the medical center in this. Good going, keep up the good work with that. Now, speaking of tradition, since this is the 10th of the Napa and now eponymously also 
Let me have my moment of embarrassment there. Nathan Bass, Liver Transplant Conferences. <clears throat> this is clearly now a well-established tradition. I think at 10, we kind of have to just accept that. And I just wanted to leave you with this, that traditions give rise to legends. And for example, consider the Tower of London Ravens. They are a tradition. They've been at the tower for close to 900 years. Different ravens, of course, but always a minimum of six in number. And the legend says that if the ravens ever leave the tower, the tower will fall, and so too the kingdom. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Well, now to get even a little bit more Delphic. Charles II, the merry monarch of 18th century Britain, was so concerned by this that he decreed that the ravens should never be allowed to leave the tower. And he instituted a, a procedure at that time, which is still practiced today, in which a raven surgeon clips their left wing. Now, I think I've gone far enough with this allegorical reference. So here's to the continuation of a great tradition, and may it endure in robust health, serving community and faculty alike. Please have a great time. I'll hand you back to Francis. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Tony. I, I can never do what Tony does, so I just stay within myself. Um, so uh, I like to... Uh, Yes, I, I'd like to just spend five minutes uh, just to uh, go over and uh, you know, to talk to you about uh, the liver transplant program at UCSF. Our mission is really to try to provide the highest quality of specialized care to patients with liver disease and try to advance the field of liver transplant through research and clinical experience. Um, we're not able to do what we're doing without the contribution f you know, from everyone within the huge uh, transplant service, uh, administration, clinical, and many, many different services. We are able to expand our hepatology group. Now we have you know, 10 adult uh, hepatologists, and we now have four pediatric. Uh, we have an incredibly stable group of transplant surgeons, there are eight of them, and we have four pre-transplant coordinators, one inpatient coordinator, uh, two inpatient nurse practitioners, three post-transplant nurse practitioners, one physician assistant, and two pre-transplant nurse practitioners uh, currently focus on the hepatitis C treatment. We have one pediatric nurse practitioner. We have very dedicated social workers for pediatric and adult, and we have one independent living donor advocate. We take a lot of pride in our results, and uh, to run a complicated inpatient liver transplant unit, we need to uh, really emphasize a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, for at any time during the inpatient uh, rounds, we have attending surgeon, hepatologists, we have a transplant surgery fellow, uh, Garrett is here, um, we have one hepatology fellow, uh, we have one GI fellow, and uh, our hepatology fellows are China Ho and Elon Neva. Uh, and we have three to four interns and two nurse practitioners, uh, transplant pharmacists, inpatient nurse coordinators, dietitian. So we have taken a really uh, a multidisciplinary approach to the care of this patient, and you know we have uh, really talented. Uh, dedicated uh, anesthesia team, and uh, the ICU team is really uh, incredibly helpful to us in terms of ventilator management, but we are the primary team in taking care of these patients. And the last few years, we had the, uh, um, you know, we're very fortunate to have a dedicated transplant infectious disease consult service in helping us manage these patients. So in terms of the volume, we've been um, doing very well. Going back to 2006, uh, we're averaging 140 to 150 transplants a year, and a steady number of pediatric transplants, 10 to 20. And this year, we are projected to be doing close to 150 transplants. Um, and we are very proud of our results. Uh, you know, our results are available to the public. Uh, we have center-specific results that are required by CMS, reviewed by UNOS, and reviewed by insurance, and is part of the patient package. 
um, you look at uh, our results, uh, SRTR has not updated the, the results since 2001, but the, the, the updated results will be available 2014. You can see that our patient survival as well as graph survival are better than expected and also better than the uh, national average, and these comparisons were statistically significant um, in general. And uh, both for disease donor as well as life donor, if you go back and look at our results, at three years we have an overall patient survival of close to 90 percent. And uh, also we have a highly successful life donor transplant program that to uh, the great extent separate us from many other uh, transplant programs. Again, we had statistically better uh, outcome compared to expected or national average. Um, and in fact, when we go back to 2005, we had better than expected graph survival at one in three years over 11 consecutive periods dated back to 2005, and we had better than expected patient survival at one in three years in six out of 12 periods and the last five consecutive periods, and no other centers out of the 120 program have done as well. Uh, so just uh, showing that uh, in number of periods when we are uh, better than expected, uh, statistically significant uh, in 11 out of 12 for graph survival and 6 out of 12 for patient survival. And, you know, I think that uh, that is really a testament to teamwork and really skilled surgeons. But when we look at also what, uh, how we do before they get to transplant, we have, you know, really done very well. We have done better than expected in terms of weightless mortality. Uh, so we take pride that we can take care of patients very well uh, to try to bridge them to transplant. And in 10 out of 12 reporting periods, we had better than expected wait list outcome. And only one cent other center in this country has done as well. And compared to other centers in the Bay Area and also in California, uh, we, are, we are really stand out. So, uh, we're not able to do what we're doing without the support from the community. We'd like to really uh, thank all of you for the support. And, uh, and again, I'd like to emphasize that uh, we take pride in taking care of very sick patients, uh, patients who are technically challenging. For instance, people with portal vein thrombosis, people who need liver retransplant, we take on these high-risk patients and still maintain very uh, good results, and we have a very robust life donor transplant program for both adult and pediatric patients. So our mission is really work with all you in the community to improve the quality of care, provide the best results, and uh, we thrive or try to really improve our communication. And so uh, I take the uh, responsibility to be you know, always carrying my pager uh, 24 hours a day and so that people can get hold of me. And uh, there's a 24-hour number when people can call and talk to the on-call hepatologist. And we have uh, expanded our outreach program. We've been doing outreach in Fresno, Modesto, Santa Clara, and we have just started uh, Reno. We'll be planning on having a new outreach clinic in Fremont. So uh, thank you very much for coming, and I uh, and, uh, hope that you enjoy the program. Thank you.